Okay, how are we doing out there? First things first, it's Kenneth Bird on the Creator of Supreme Ambient Light Rejection Screen Paint using Ambient Light Rejection Technology Gain. I told you we're going to come back and do the splatter screen demonstration. So, the splatter screen is basically a um, white rejection screen. I'm going to trash out the day, but I'm going to take my trash out the day, but I figured I still got a little more to go. So, I'm going to use some weights and trash bags when I can get that filled up to the top. All right, so the splatter screen is basically a white projection screen, 2.0 screen you get on Amazon. That has all these pictures behind it showing a whole entire family and a well-lit environment or outside and the screen just looks absolutely incredible and people are fooled into buying these screens. They get home, they set them up and the screen sucks. So um, what we have here is I told you I was going to get the most powerful projector we have here in the shop. It isn't the 505. The 505 is 5,000 lumens. It's actually the Sony, the Sony 5200 lumen projector. Well, it's 5200 lumen projector right here. So this is my VPL FH36, which happens to be, um, oh, okay, we already start off on the door with the crow boy. Got to go, buddy. Sorry. Anyway, so let's move on. All right. So as I said before, I have churches that I deal with and other companies that I deal with. And one of the problems that they have is the fact they'll have a high-end projector, they'll have it at a good distance, and they'll have a white screen, and they can't figure out why the screen's not showing up. And it's because, keep in mind, the higher the projector you go, the more white light you're going to reflect off the screen. Your equipment is you're snow blinding your screen. It's like if you walk outside in a snowstorm, you can't see Jack, but if you put sunglasses on, you can see a little better. All right, so this is what we call the splatter screen. We don't paint the whole screen. I just splatter my technology across it just to show you exactly how much you're missing. All right, so let's grab some measuring tape here because I, I'm curious myself. I know I had measuring tape on here somewhere. I'm curious to see. Oh, here we go. Usually, I got a hunt for measuring tape because we're usually we're out of the kit. We're out of the living room, and the living room or slash just one of the dining room is around ten feet back. And make sure we're a good distance away from our screen. So we are. What are we coming in at? We're coming in at around nineteen feet. Well, let's see. I want to make sure that's accurate. 19 feet. 19 feet. Let's see where we stand at. We got to be at the front of the projector in order for this to be right. Bring it a little more. Okay, so we are around, yeah, we're around 19, almost there, 19 feet back. So here we are at the front. I'll show you we're legit. Put right here for where the screen is hitting. And then we'll bring it all the way back here. At around, we're on 18 feet back. There we go, 18 feet right there. All right, so it just goes to show you when I told you the last demonstration I did that this is 5,200 lumens. Just because it's 5,200 lumens doesn't mean 5,200 lumens is going to hit the screen because it's not. Less than 5,200 lumens is going to hit the screen. Because that white screen's not going to pop up at all. There you go. Oops, I got you the wrong way. That was around the wrong way at all. Sorry about that. But yeah, so that's what I was trying to explain to you. People had, the first thing a church or a big company will go for is the most high power projector they can get. The more lumens they figure is going to give them better picture quality, going to give them better contrast, the whole nine yards. They even go by what the projector is saying. The projector is saying they're going to get 50,000 to one or 20,000 to one contrast. They figure that screen is going to be able, they're going to be able to see that contrast level. And they turn that projector on and go, oh, it isn't what I thought it was going to be. Because the white screen does not have the capability to pick up any form of contrast. And as I said before, contrast is everything because without it, the screen just can't pick it up. And just, just the image that you're getting. Now, mind you, as I told you before, that some people think because they have a 5200 lumen projector, that the screen is being hit with 52. You no, know, it's being hit with way less than that. Depending on how far the projector is sitting back, how much ambient light you have in the environment, depends on how much of those lumens are going to drop before they hit the screen. And the screen's going to have to be to take whatever lumens that are left over from whatever the projector travels to A to B. It's going to gather up those lumens and it's going to magnify them to push an image back at you so you can see contrast. 
and color and the whole nine yards, but the image completely washing out as you see with the white screen. So whatever lumens that are left over that the white screen can't pick up, the black screen is definitely picking it up and showing you an image at 18 feet back. All right, so let's, uh, I'm gonna continue on with the magical butterflies. Got my uh, speaker in here so we can hear some sound with this. And if I do all contrast levels and people go, well, you know, genius, guess what? You know, your screen's going to pick up better contrast. It's a black screen, so I'm showing you color. We'll do some contrast in there, too, but I'm just showing you color. So you see what the screen here is. You see how faded and washed out it is. Mine, this is 5200 lumen Sony projector, 1920 by 1200 WXGA. It's a venue projector. Look at the size of that projector and look at the size of that monster. It's a venue projector, it's used for commercial use. So if this thing is not picking it up on a white screen, what thing, chance do you think you have if you're going to use 3400 lumens or 2500 lumens or 1500 lumens on your projector that you're going to pick up on a white screen and I can't even pick it up on 5200 lumens. That's great. And even worse, and the thing about it is, I see a lot of people with these screens outside. That is even worse. So you're trying to use a white projection screen outside. Man, you're not picking up nothing. You're going to have to really be out there late at night in order for that screen to pick up a somewhat decent picture. We'll run this again because it's warm today. So we're going to run this again outside. I did this demonstration outside. For those who didn't see the demonstration outside, using this surface, I'm going to post at the bottom. You got to see that because it was freaking cool. But anyway, I'll post at the bottom to check it out. But like I said, people are going to go with white screens outside because that is tradition. You know what I mean? It's tradition to have a white screen outside, but it's, whew, man, it's an ugly, ugly picture. Now, what bet did you freaking lose? No, can't even see the OLED symbol pop up in the middle of the screen on the white. Can't see none of that. All your color washes out on a white screen. All right, figure out what happened right there. What happened to be one of the shortest demonstrations I've ever seen, but whatever. So that means 5200 lumens washes completely out. Anything you hit that screen with, and it happens to involve any form of white levels, it's gonna wash out. I think the more shocking effect we get is when we take it outside. I'm gonna use less lumens when we go outside. I'm gonna use, um, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna use 40, 4,300 lumens outside. when it comes to flowers and so forth. I want you to zoom in on that white screen too. Just take it all in. If 
I can't get 5200 lumens to show up on a white screen inside, what chance do you think it has on a projector outside on 43? I gotta ask something really quick. Now for individuals who like to say, oh, it's gotta be its camera. So let me get this straight. The camera captures everything in the environment, right? So if I have the ability and I have a Samsung uh, um, Plus 10, the Plus Note 10, whatever that phone is, that's what I have right now, this is my phone, right? That means it would actually advance the picture quality by a lot when it comes to the white screen, which would show up much better than what you're seeing here, all this would be showing off in a really advanced, bright, illuminated image, if that was the case. So what they're saying is my phone has the capability to just pinpoint certain areas on the screen to be able to highlight those areas. Yeah, I'd like to know what kind of phone that is. Mm, that's a good one right there. I don't think people are don't think things through when they say things. So when you're looking at a demonstration where I'm showing up other high performance screens and stuff like that, remember all of them would actually receive the same kind of advancement at the same time if my phone is producing that, has that capability. Much like if I'm hitting the screens with a floodlight, they're all being hit with the floodlight, not certain ones, all of them at the same time. Like they're all being hit with 5200 lumens of projector. <laughs> That's when people say stuff like that, it just makes me go, whoop, okay. I've been drinking whatever today, I don't know what. We did that demonstration today, which is better, white, gray, or black? Depends on what shade of gray you're talking about. I got a whole drawer full of sample sheets. You got to come out of this video and go check out some of the videos I have I've done against high performance certified screens, as in daylight screen, elite screens, DMP, Supernova, those companies like that. Uh, we just did a demonstration a few minutes ago uh, earlier today when I got up out of my bed and I showed a demonstration against that Paxel. I think it is that 8.0 screen that runs about five grand versus a $68 motorized projection screen coated with their technology. You might want to check that one out. The results on that one is actually pretty interesting. I feel like basically hammering people today. Hold on for me, I'll be back. So which is better? Gray or you know, black, black or gray? Yeah. Let's find out. Let's find out. All right. Yeah. No, your question was pretty much on point, and I do respect your question, I really do. Here we are, how about this? I told you, I got a drawer full of sample sheets. When I test my product out, I don't test mix next to mix. I go for the certified screens. I got a drawer full of company certified screens. I go call them up and say, hey, look, I want a sample sheet. I want to know what the best top screen that you have on the market, and I'm going to test my technology against it. So keep in mind, as I said before, this screen right here, that jet black screen you're seeing right there, that screen is 138 inch, 235.1. That screen right there pretty much costs me around 500 something dollars, 519 dollars. It's actually a silver ticket converted to black technology. That one right there cost me 500 something bucks. And if it took me two quarts, which would be 187 altogether, like seven or 800 bucks to put this thing together, um, consider the fact that if I were to get a Dark Star 9 at 100 inches, not 130, 235.1, 100 inch at 16.9 would have cost me $3,000. If I went and got the Paxel screen at 100 inch, 16.9 would have cost me five grand. So more form expensive than this. And keep in mind, that's at 100 inch. This is 138 inch, 235.1. So if you were to go out and get a 130 inch, 235.1, that may have been coded with this technology right here. How much do you think it would have cost you if this screen at 169 would have cost you 13 to $1,400? A lot of money. That's all to it. It just comes down at the end, a lot of money. All right, so we're going to take this right here. 
And we're going to lay this against the gray here, right here. All right. We're going to go back see if we see any difference. We're going to go a little closer because we're going to have to get close on top of that one. See that one from the door. So let's see. Let's go with. Um, well, we can go back to where we're at right now. So we're going to do it. Sick. See that beautiful bright green that's pulling off the black screen? There's your gray screen right there. I've done a demonstration where I had, I don't know what screen it was, it was a 92 inch before I painted it. I had this huge white screen that I laid it against a 35 inch. And I took that screen and laid it against it and said, look, there's, no, there's really no difference. There isn't no difference between a light gray screen and a white screen, okay? The only difference is you get a little bit of contrast. That's basically about it, but they both react the same way. You have to have contrast in order to pull color. You have to have a high black level to pull the color and contrast and all that. Why do you think they give that to you on your projector? On your projector, you automatically, the more, the more higher the contrast level on your projector, they brag about you as projector is a 15,000 to 1, 20,000 to 1. There's a reason why. Because you know you need contrast. You have to have contrast. You get that screen to pop. We developed the 9. has incredible, beautiful capabilities. The um, Eclipse Platinum we developed is one of the darkest gray screens we've ever invented. We have the black silver, which is a gray screen that produces interesting contrast levels and colors for a screen that, that, that's gray. But I told you, hands down, when it comes to one of the favorite screens that I have in here, will always be black technology. Because it has the ability to be able to produce contrast levels that is needed in gaming and movies and sports and everything. It's, it's a requirement, something you have to have. It makes the screen pop. It makes it stand out. Let's go with, um, let's see. I'm going to do a, I'll show you for instance. All right. Make sure we this for a minute. Let's see this right here. That's the other one. I'm about to turn that one on in a few minutes. That is the jet black screen. Did we lose our feet here? Hold on for a minute. Here, I'm on my phone right now. This is all being run through my phone. All right, so I'm trying to bring something up. Here we go. Yes, we need to find right there. Those black women. Usually, the reason why I turn because I know from the door I'm gonna get a political commercial is gonna pop up on there, and I try to keep things as neutral as possible. That's where I put the cat food at. There you go. Now this is a Starfield demonstration. This shows you whether or not if your screen is actually pulling a contrast level. My projector has a 2,000, I've probably 2,000 or 3,000 to 1 contrast. That's it. I told somebody, look, you can have a projector with a million to one contrast level, right? And you can show that on a white screen. I can take a projector that has a 200 to one contrast and I'll produce a darker contrast level than your projector at a million on a gray screen. Doesn't make a difference how high your contrast level is on your projector, you can't pull a 100% black level. It's like I say, it's the equivalent of trying to go in your backyard and try to squeeze water out of a stone. It's not gonna happen. That's like if someone's going to say, well, can a black screen produce a white level as high as a white screen? Virtually impossible. Not going to happen. Nope. But there's no point in you spending the money because keep in mind, when you get that 20,000 to 1 or 15,000 to 1, you're not getting that for free. You're paying for that. You're paying for that contrast level. The only thing is it's just an option that you will never use.
so I can watch Batman in a fully lit environment. Yep, movies that have dark contrast to it. Those of you that are huge gamers of Modern Warfare, Call of Duty, you know what happens when you get into those night missions where it gets really dark out there. You can't see Jack to begin with. Black screens pull all that out. All the little detail, all the little secret nesting spots that you can sit at that other people can't sit at. I remember when I was doing Call of Duty on a 200 inch screen, my scope was the size of a car tire. There's no way in the world I was going to miss you. All right, so let's go from here. And I'm going to fire this one up too. Hold on for a minute. Fire. the other projector I'm about to fire it right now. This one that sits in my window. That is my daytime. Well, not really that. It's my, uh... Let me see where it's my... Now it's going to get brighter than that, trust me. I'm going to turn my projectors on at around 4 and 5 o'clock in the evening, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock in the evening. These screens will fire up. It's going to make a difference. They'll fire up. See how I washed out the images? See how beautiful and dark the colors are here in the black screen? Look on the gray screen, look how washed out the images. Look at the white screen, look how washed out the images. It's because I told you before, when it comes to these screens, when they do these screen setups for these high performance screens, this is a preset background. It's uh, like, a, like a, put it this way, like if you were doing a stage performance, you got the lighting and everything just right, you got the sound and everything just right. Everything's perfect for that stage, for that show. Well, that's how they display their screens. If you watch any of their demonstrations, it's probably a rented house. It's probably, all, all, like I said, it's using ambient light controlled environments, which means they control where the lighting goes. In this environment, there is no ambient light control. You turn the lights on and that's it. The screen gets hit with that light, it gets hit with that light. Majority, most people I see with this setup, with these projectors, with these screens, Usually there's no light near the screen at all. Now it shows a much better image, as you can see, next to the white screen. You know why? Because this is how they test their technology. They test their technology versus a white screen. Anything is going to be the white screen. You can see up close. So how do you have a screen that's jet black that is actually matching side by side to a screen that is two shades or three shades lighter than the black screen? Because the black technology we develop is the, has the ability to pull up a white level. See, the thing about it is any black surface is going to pull contrast. The one problem you're going to have with any form of black technology, it has to be able to pull up a high enough white level. If not, the images come out dirty and dingy. Now, if you were to take this sample sheet and say you have a white screen in your house and you took this sample sheet, you got it from Elite Screens, you got it, you put it up against your screen right here, your white screen, you can see a difference between the gray screen and you can see the difference between your white screen, right? See a difference in the color, right? Uh, we have uh, at the bottom, I think it should be in the bottom of the description, there is the website information right from there. I think I posted everything at the bottom. Now we'll take their screen and we'll stick it against our black technology right here. Oops, I'm saying it on the projector. And now you see the image is faded and washed out.
and contrast levels, none of that comes up. And that is a screen that's going to cost you $1,400. I'm hearing that beep beep sound. Every time I hear that sound, I think I got a package coming. I homed in for those packages now. Yeah, so I said white screens, like I said, understand what you're saying, 100%. White screens just will not give you that color you that you need, but no problem at all, no problem at all. No problem at all, happy to be at help. For you, yeah, because some people are still using white screens, you know what I mean? But like I said, the, when they tell you that that projector can give you that ability to be able to do that, produce those colors and stuff, no, that's not going to happen. You have to have that contrast level. We're going to get any political commercials. Okay, we're good with that. Download the Sportsbook app. Make So much from your projector. Like I said, it's the most powerful projector I have here in the shop at 52. It's even, it's even more powerful lumens when it comes to that big boy Chrissy upstairs. It's 2,000 lumens more. And it's a Sony. So it's a name brand. It's a high end name brand projector. with 5200 lumens high powered Sony venue projector FH36 let's see what happens if I take a 1500 lumen projector that has a 16,000 to 1 contrast capability which is the Panasonic and we're going to push this thing right up on top of the screen just to show you that even if the projector is sitting right up on top of the screen with 16,000 to 1 contrast you're not going to see it on a white screen all right, so we're going to do a swap out real quick. Let's change over. Hold on, you guys can go with me upstairs for a minute. I got to go do something upstairs. I'm going to work on something. We're going to do that same demonstration outside because this is also going to be geared to people who have projection screen setups outside and they're still using, um, I'm in here. Yeah, I'm in here. They're still using, um, um, they're still using white screens. Let me see what I came here for. Okay, projectors to use. We're going to pick that one right there. That is the uh, 15, 16,000. Contract projector. People ask me why do I have so many projectors? This is why. Because I have to do a demonstration on all different sorts of projectors. Wish this thing had a handle on the side of the table too. Honestly, goodness. Not that lightweight. Hold on. All right. Come with me for a minute, people. Let's go through here. Now that's the Chrissy. 
5,000 lumen projector right there. And there's my screen right here, fully lit environment. And that image is gonna pull up with no problem whatsoever. I chose to use a real black scenery because black fades even faster when being hit by ambient light. There's light coming in through the windows, light coming through the back window, using the veneer curtains, letting plenty of light flush into this environment. Want to come in here and do some gaming? I can do gaming with no problem at all. Never have to worry about the image ever washing out. So I'm going to shut this big boy down for a minute. Because I'm going to have to run the air conditioner in here. Because you hear that noise it's making? I think it's cooling itself off. Which means the room is too hot. And I got to turn off the heat because it is hot outside right now. That's why I have an air conditioner over there. I have an air conditioner pretty much in every room that I run projectors at. Because usually most people, they'll have one projector. I have two or three projectors that run in one room. All right, so the Panasonic ugh, doesn't have sound. Keep in mind if you buy this projector, it has multiple HD outputs on the back, which are fantastic. But it doesn't have sound. It requires a separate sound input if you're going to run something to the back of it. All right, so we're gonna put this right here. Put you guys right there. All right, we are going to swap out our projectors. Okay. Let's see, we just need the cord for this one, and this one right here. We don't need the sound because there's no sound with this one. Turn this one off. Sound for this one here, and. Stuff. Just down here. We'll bring our projector up. Right there. Now you can check out this projector right here. If you want to look at the model number of that projector, whoops, on the right side, there we go. You want to look at the model number of that projector right there and check it on your phone. That projector right there has a 16,000 to 1 contrast on that projector. I like this projector because it's jet black. I love it because it's a jet black projector. I'll show you the outputs on the back of it. As I said before, it has multiple HDMI outputs on the back of it. So if you want to hook up more than one HDMI and so forth from the back of it, but keep in mind, it does not have, um, doesn't have sound. So you're going to have to hook it up to a separate audio source, much like a receiver or something like that, to get your sound to do it. And this projector is completely automatic, which means the lens, focus, all that stuff is automatic. So which one of these happens to be this here? And it's a full 1080p. If you're asking, it's a full 1080p projector, uh, 1920 by 1080p. Right. So we're powering this one up right now. I got this one at an auction on eBay. I got it for $139. Nobody was bidding on it. It was just sitting there. Nobody was bidding on it. So I put $10 on it on the bid. Got it. And the only thing wrong with it was it just needed a new lamp. And that's it. Went on and ordered a new lamp. And actually, the people that were putting it up were the Salvation Army. They were putting it up. I bought it right from them. I think it's practically brand new. Just had to go change the lamp on that space about it, but no scratches, no blemishes on it. Probably got any scratches because what I put on it. Okay, let me see if I can bring this back a little bit more. Have to bring it back some. Oh, let me see. Need this a little bit. Bring this down some. Okay, see, even look like even Steven. 
Let's see if we can get the focus to come out better or the zoom. So we're as far as the zoom can go. So we got to bring it back some. It's got to be brought back some. I need to be able to fill out some of the screen. All right, we'll bring it down. So this is vertical left, horizontal. Oh, wrong with horizontal. Now I got another horizontal from a vertical. That's kind of bad. All right, there we go. So this projector right here has a 16, 16,000 to one contrast. So judging from the measuring tape from here to here, we are around eight feet back from the screen, right there. So eight feet back, still under the light. And this projector is at uh, 1500 lumens. All right. Go pull up a star field. Let's see if you get any change. Make sure we don't get any political commercials. All right, we're good. I just want the political commercials that pop up. So at a 16,000 to 1 contrast, doesn't make a difference. You're not going to pull up anything on your white screen. That's always just useless. You just anybody bought this projector, these projectors aren't cheap when they came out. I got mine for 140 bucks. I got lucky. Brand new. They're a couple, they're about a thousand dollars or so forth. Probably you get one maybe brand new to probably charge you maybe like thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars for one of them. All right, so it's a full 1080p projector. And some people get to like 16,000 to one contrast. I mean, if I hit this on a white screen, I'm going to be to pick up that really deep, dark, rich contrast level I've been creating. No, you're not going to get it at all, period. It's just an option that you will never use. This is what I'm talking about. It's an option that you will never, ever use. Never use. Never use it. Yep, there you go. You won't be to pull it up. If I spend more money and I get myself a better screen than a white screen, I'll get myself a gray screen like this and I'll be able to pull it up. Nope, nope, you're not going to get it. It's, it's not going to be there for you. That's it. That's what you're going to get. Imagine having 100 inches of that and with this projector. All right, how about this? How about we go with so then you're probably thinking, okay, so I can't get it from that screen. Maybe if I upgrade to a more expensive screen and I go with the Dark Star 9, which is a darker screen, I go with $3,000 for my projection screen next. So we'll take our Dark Star 9, we'll stick that right there in the middle. And we'll see what we get. Now you just spent three thousand dollars for a hundred inch screen, but maybe if we go with a different brand, we'll go with a DMP Supernova. It's a pretty dark surface right here. Maybe this will do the trick. Gotta go get some more tape, people. Ran out of tape, people. I think it's up there somewhere. I should be back because there's another sample sheet I need to do that demonstration on, so I have to grab another one. What's this one over here? Oh, we got another DMP Supernova. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, we got another one. We need this one too. projector nothing wrong with your projector you paid a couple grand for it so it's not the projector this projector is 1080p maybe it's not bright enough and some people go buy themselves a brighter projector we all saw what happened with the brighter projector so so we'll take this one right here 
which if you look at the surface for this, it's nice and dark, right? There we go. It's a nice dark surface. So now we're up to around $5,000 for a projection screen. So we'll stick that one right there. Let's see what we get out of that. We pull contrast, no contrast. All right. Let's go with the DMP Supernova. Supernova. They have one called the Infinity and Blade. I think this one may be the Blade. All right. Maybe we spend another $5,000 for a projection screen. Let's see if we can pull a contrast level. Right there. See what we get. There you go. That's quite a lot of money when you think about it. So any one of these screens are going to look incredible against a white screen because that's what they test them against. They get, test them against white screens. We test our technology against their technology. We find the darkest screens that they possibly have, and we basically test, how you doing? And we test our technology against their stuff. I call them up and say, what is your best screen? What is your most expensive screen? What is your darkest screen that you have, the most advanced screen that you have in your category? We'll buy it, bring it over here. I'm going to test it against our black technology and see what you have. Oh, we don't tell them that. Of course, they'll never send it over. Now, one of the screens I was quite impressed with when I first saw it was the daylight screen right there. Because when I saw the demonstration, of course, I saw it next to a white screen. I'm thinking, oh, this is not going to go well if we get it over here because they're testing that screen against a white screen. When technically, they should be testing the screen against another gray screen. As when we do it, the black silver, black silver screens aren't tested against white screens. They're tested against other gray screens just like them. So we can see which ones have better contrast, which ones have better color. That's what has to be done. But like I said, it, it's, um, it is what it is. What you're seeing, which is what you, what you get. These are very expensive screens. Now, chances are I probably had one of the companies contact me and say, oh, you slandered a project. But I didn't slander. I'm just showing you exactly what it is. There's no cheap projector I got behind me. It has a 16,000 to one contrast. I and mean, how come you're not seeing it? The only screen that's actually producing a much darker image than all of these is the Dark Star 9. Now, if I were to take the Dark Star 9 off, and I were to put this against the white screen right here, right? Now, you're getting a more of a darker image against a white screen. Any one of these screens, if I take them off, they look better against a white um, I guess the white screen. I told you anything would be a white screen. That's a little more darker. But uh, see how the screen's fading up because the light's hitting it? Because we have too much ambient light in the environment, that's why. They're not used to having this much light hit the screen. I can't do any of these demonstrations outside because then that would be wrong. That'd be unfair because none of these screens are designed for outside. But Elite does have a screen called a Yardmaster and it's white. What do you think will happen if we take a white screen outside versus a black screen? Well, let's see. Let's go back there. This is a pretty dark surface as you can see. The only problem is the reflective material, that's the problem. They all have this reflective material, which I don't know why. But the reflective material looks dark here, but as you bring it back, it gets lighter. It's reflective material. Anyway, Dark Star 9. Same kind of reflective material. I don't understand. I don't understand this at all. Like I said, when I first saw this screen and I saw a dark, I was like, wait a minute, Daylight has a black screen? I was quite impressed. I wanted to get my hands on this. I don't know how much it costs. I needed this sample sheet. I was looking, I'm like, wait a minute, that's a black screen? Oh, way. But then I looked a little closer to it and I was like, it's more of a dark gray. That's what it is. If you look at it, it's more of a dark gray. But it looks black to you, doesn't it? If you do it in different reflections of the light, it looks black. But it has no contrast. So how is the screen this dark doesn't have any contrast? So if I put it here against the white screen, if 
And I told you, screens have something called narrow viewing comb. You can see it, watch this. Now watch. Yeah, that screen went black that quick. It's called a narrow viewing cone. Now, I did this upstairs on a 4,000 lumen projector. Some people felt that I was hitting the screen with too much, um, too much, too high of a, um, a lumen count. This projector behind me is only 1,500 lumens. So you can see my body's here. But I'm not moving in front of the camera. It's called a narrow viewing cone. That means the screen can only be viewed if you're standing right in front of it. If you go to turn from the left and right, the screens become dark on the edges. These screens also too have a problem with ultra short throws. Any screen that has a kind of reflective surface may have problems with ultra short throw and short throw projectors from the door. That's why they have special screens developed for ultra short throw projectors. You will pay more for those too. That's why I have all these sample sheets because like I said, I have to test my technology against everything, against everything get my hands on. And before anybody says, what about Black Diamond? We've done that one before in 2015. Yeah, that didn't turn out too well. They didn't like that too much at all. So basically, we have orders to stay away from their stuff, and they won't send us anything even we asked for. And if we paid for it, they won't ask for it. They won't send us anything. So no, we're not going to get anything from them at all. Let's see how the other screen's doing over here in the light. Let's ricocheting off my slaw. Oh, sorry about that. We're going back and forth in the demonstrations here. All right, so let's see. See anything different? Remember, I told you, this is a white screen, right? You see, this is white, right? And there we are with the $5,000 projection screen. Look at that real carefully. I want you to really look at that real carefully. I'm not gonna say anything. I'll let you figure it out for yourself. I want you to look at that real carefully. Keep in mind, Well, of course the whites are going to look whiter than the 5K screen. It's a white screen. As I said before, nothing's ever going to beat a white screen when it comes to white levels. Nothing. A white screen is the only screen that has the ability to produce a 100% white level. There's no gray screen, no black screen, nothing on the face of the planet that will ever match a white screen. But keep in mind, a white screen cannot pull contrast and cannot pull proper color. That's why the colors fade and wash. We'll do that also. But if you look at it, it's not about the white levels. Look how close it comes to the screen. Boy, I really hate to be somebody would act. I'm not going to say anything. Y'all figure it out. But you can see it for yourself. I told you when I said when it comes to gray screens, they ain't that, they're not that far off from a white screen. It's not that far off from it. And keep in mind, like I said, my screen is black and actually producing a high enough white level. See how much lighter that screen is to my screen? And look at the white levels on my screen in colors. So let's take our uh, screen right here. Oh, I'm off. Put that right there. All right, we will grab the, which one we're going to grab? We're going to grab um, Dark Star 9. There's the Dark Star 9. All right.
I have walked past, oh, I was saying, where the frig is my phone? I walked past my phone like four or five times. Couldn't find it. So this is what I'm going to show you. We don't shy away from colors here. I'm gonna show you. First, we're going to show you the white level. I'm going to pause this here. I want you to see this. We don't edit anything out. So I want you to see this. See where it can, it's not picking up at all? First, we have to get another screen there, too. All right, so we have the um, the uh, Paxil screen. We have the oh, Paxil screen, whatever. We have the Dark Star Nine, and we need the Grace Cinema. We need the uh, the lighter screens. All right. Okay. Now, first thing we're going to do is we are going to show off the color white. I don't shy away from these demonstrations. When we show white, white, white um, demonstrations, I like to show these off. So we'll show the white levels off. All right, so that's our technology on white levels. Okay. I told you when it comes to our, our, when we show off white levels on our black screens by themselves, you don't, it's like you're not going to miss anything. Trust me. Now, we will show you the blue screen. Just because the screen produces a higher white level doesn't make it a good thing. It makes it a very bad thing. Trust me. I've said this many times before. So now we're showing off a solid blue. Now we're showing a solid red. You notice that they're picking up the same color as the white screens. Now, I wouldn't really say that. To tell you the truth, we have demonstrations. Keep in mind, before any of this technology can pass a test, it has to pass a thousand lumen test, which means it has to be outside. If I were to switch this over to the 5200 lumen projector, you get the same reactions from the same screen. So I'll humor you on that one. We'll go back and we'll switch over to the 52 to see if these screens can produce a much higher and brighter red level. All right? But keep in mind, we've done demonstrations with my technology outside, even on the gray technology on 1,000 lumens at 13 feet back, and was able to pull bright, beautiful images. So it has nothing to do with that. It's the fact that the screens don't carry contrast. That's the problem. All right, so let's come out of here. Let's take this projector out. Do another swap. I like this projector because these shut off really fast. I got some projectors that take freaking forever to shut off. And if you want, I can bring a Sony 1000 lumen projector downstairs, which is much lower than that one. But no, our demonstration technology has to pass an outside demonstration of 1000 lumens. All of them have to go through it. And they can pull it at 13 feet back easily. All right. Let's bring this one back. We have to be back around 18 feet for the next, for that demonstration. Projector off. Ugh. Bring this back here and grab the Sony. That bit me too. Later on, I'll show you about the Sony's twin mode because they have a twin mode in their projector. I don't think they even talk about that too much about their twin mode capability to be able to produce two images on a screen side by side. Chrissy's already had them too. Chrissy's had twin modes. They have picture and picture when it comes to a twin mode. All right, so we're firing up at 18 feet back, 5200 lumens, red screen.
Or any other projector set at eight feet. There you go. Never changes. It doesn't. It doesn't make a difference what your lumen count on your projector is. It could be a thousand lumens. It could be fifteen hundred lumens. It doesn't make a difference. If your screen can't pull a contrast level, it can't pull color. It reacts the same way. And we're now at eighteen feet back. That says 5200 lumens, 1920 by 1200 WXGA Sony venue projector. They run brand new around six grand. This projector can't pull that image up on that screen, and nothing else is going to pull it up. This is what I tell you people this is what you're, when I show you these color patterns, this is what your projector is seeing when it hits the screen. This is how blue is being displayed on your screen. White screen. Completely gone. Not even there. Not even showing a trace of it. Just gone. Oh, that one quit for the day. Like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done with this. Yep. Not even there. Gone. And this happens to a lot of churches. They get these big high venue project projectors and people say well people in regular homes don't have projectors like this no they don't to tell you the truth but companies that i do business with do have those projectors and they want to know why they have a projector of such a high caliber that they spent a couple of thousand dollars for is not picking up an image or any color and why it's washing out when i project it first thing they say to me hey ken look i got a projector that's six thousand lumens seven thousand lumens of course, the reason why they use such high caliber projectors is because they have to calculate exactly how far the projector is sitting back and how much commercial lighting they may have in the environment. So they know they're going to lose about maybe 10,000 lumens. Some of them may have 50,000, 30,000 projectors. They have to calculate how much light it's going to basically strip away from the lumens before it makes contact with the screen. They know they're going to use the lumen count. Ooh, doo, doo, doo. No, I have not found one yet, and I'm still looking for one. Actually, there is a company, but again, they won't allow us to touch their tech. I would like to get my hands on a Slate 7, Slate 8. I've already done the Black Diamond already, but I just want those particular ones. And there is one company in China, which I have been in talks with them, and they have been in talks with me back and forth, um, called XY Screens. Now, I noticed some flaws in XY Screens because... And in their demonstrations, they are known for using a lot of ultra short throw projectors. You really can't do a demonstration based off an ultra short throw projector because not everybody's going to be using an ultra short throw projector. You know what I mean? So what's going to happen if you base all your demonstrations off ultra short throw projectors, right? And you're somebody who buys that screen happens to have a long throw. Say they're sitting back 30 feet. So that means that how is that screen going to pick up on a distance throw? If you have 5,000 lumens in an ultra short throw, you're sitting less than a foot away from the screen. That ain't much of a distance throw, to tell you the truth. So you're not really going to lose any lumens to begin with. It's going to make contact with the screen, bam, just like that, where these projectors have to travel a distance, which means their lumen count is going to slowly drop off depending on how much light's in the environment, and that screen's going to have to pull that image off. You really shouldn't base your technology off one projector. That's why I have multiple projectors. So that's one of the things I noticed. 
On top of that, watching their demonstrations and studying their demonstrations, they don't have a lot of ambient light around the environment. Same thing, ambient light controlled environment. They have a little window here, and maybe a skylight there, and some, some lights here on the side, but they never show any light physically hitting the screen. We test all our technology outside. Our ambient light rejection tests are done outside. So, you know, I'm, but I'm still curious. I, it's funny thing about it, I can't find anything on eBay. I can't find anything on eBay about them. I can't find anything like where to buy the screen from. So I'm definitely not going to, uh, there's a few places, some sketchy websites. I'm not putting my information in there, but I'll get one sooner or later. I'll get one. Yeah, but I'll get one sooner or later. It would be nice. I really like to try have one. I just want to see somebody do. I'm not trying to say that I'm on King of the Hill. No, I'm not that. There is going to be somebody one day that's going to have technology on the level that it should be tested and should be on. And I really would like to see that. But everybody does the same demonstrations. These dark environments, these poorly lit environments, ambient light controlled, and all that nonsense and whatever. I got it right now. We have a screen that can take a direct hit from sunlight. You ever seen that thing before? That that crazy technology I stuck in the window? It took a direct hit from sunlight. It wasn't actually sticking inside the window. It was outside the window and took a direct hit from sunlight. Everything on the opposite side. And, it's, and here's the crazy thing about it. It's transparent technology which means sunlight was filtering through the screen at the same time when the projector was filtering out the other end and it still produced an image. It's the first stair step on something we're working on, on designing a screen that can take a direct hit outside at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. If all works out a year from now, we will have a screen that you can sit outside with your friends and you can watch cartoons with sunlight hitting your screen. It's not that far-fetched, it can be done. It's just basically uh, a little bit of craziness to get it done. But, you know, if you don't believe me, it's not true. I'll post that link at the bottom. You can check it out for yourself. It's quite crazy. Here we go. We'll do this one right here. We're going to do color changing patterns. This will be random color changing patterns. Yep, we're going to get those commercials in there. There's the political commercials. They got me from the door. You have an upstairs. Oh, that's a lot of light. No, you don't. If you watched the video I did this morning where I got up out of bed and I turned on every last projector in the house and was walking through. Yeah, you, you do that with no problem whatsoever. There you go. There's my screen sitting in a bit of windows right there. And my projector in this demonstration sits back, my projector sits back 18 feet from my screen. So that screen's 126 inches, 126, yeah, 126 inches right there, 16.9. Later on today, uh, we're going to be going outside and we're going to be firing up the 135 inch screen I have sitting out on the deck. Because tonight I'm going to have to take apart the entire, everything on the deck, bring it inside because the tree cutters are coming in to cut down one of the trees in the backyard and I do not want a branch coming down and smashing. I mean, I'm not saying they're not skilled at their job and they are skilled at their job. I watch some people cutting trees on, not to offend anybody who cuts down trees. Like I said, crazy job that you have, amazing job that you have. I couldn't climb up in the tree and I couldn't do it. You know what I mean? I don't knock anybody else's job because bottom line, if I can't do it, I can't do it. So anyway, but I'm kind of fearing that, you know, something may come down and hit the screen. So, you know, it's just everyday jitters that you may have, you know what I mean? So I got to take everything apart and bring it back in. I mean, I'm pretty sure these guys are pretty skillful at what they do. it right there and sooner or later i'm gonna get me an email i'm telling you i feel it coming to get me an email from one of these companies telling me you know you're really getting on our nerves mr bird so 
that's why I showed you the white levels first. And I always do that. I always show the white levels first. The reason why I show you the white levels first is because, yeah, I want you to see exactly um, how high our white levels are on our black technology. And first people come to mind when they see that white level and see how dark the screen comes up. The first thing they say is, oh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah, that, you know, the other screens are definitely going to produce much brighter, much vivid colors. No, it's not true. It doesn't work that way. No, I can't make any popcorn. I haven't used that machine at all. But anyway, yeah, so it just gives you that mindset when people think because the screen's lighter that you're going to be able to pick up better color. No, you're actually going to pick up a more washed out image. That's like, um, all right, let's do this for kicks and giggles real quick. I don't use that popcorn machine. That popcorn machine's for decoration. I never used it. I bought it, put it together, never used it. It's a decoration. That's all it is. Never used it one time. Yeah, I got that. So instead of me going out and spending all this money for the expensive projection screens and a hot expensive projector, because I only pay, that's a 720p projector right there. And this one right here is a um, 235.1 at 138 inches right here. So altogether, this setup cost me about, I'd say about $1,100, that's it, with my projector and screen, right? And because I didn't have to spend a lot of money for a projector because the screen did all the work, I have money to buy a sofa and a full-size popcorn machine, and that's what I did with some of the money. I bought a popcorn machine. Never really had to spend any money in here. My other projector was 100 bucks. I used. I bought it off eBay used, 720p. So I bought this popcorn machine for on eBay, on Amazon for around $268. It's pretty nice. I never used it. Brand new. Bought it. Never used it. That all keeps the popcorn nice and warm, stirs it and all that. Never used it. Uh, the woman who is the driver who picks up your packages and takes them to the post office, she's going to be getting this house, and she this is all hers. So anything I build in hers is hers. I am not. I'm going to take a few things with me. That's basically about it. But um, other than that, um, I'm not carrying this stuff with me. I'm not bringing a moving truck out here to carry all this stuff in. I'll take a few of my projectors. She can have that projector right there, and everything else she can have. I'm just going to take a few of my things and. That's basically about it. That's all. So she's going to move into a house that pretty much has a lot of goodies in it. This will be her stuff. I got other plans. I have blueprints already drawn out for the theater system that I'm building for the other house. It's going to be quite insane. But like I said, her kid's going to kick out of this. Now, that projector right there, I'm going to have to have somebody come in and mound that to the ceiling. Because she has kids and they will kick the crap out of that. So I know that's coming. So I have to have somebody come in and mount that in. I'll bring in a professional installer. I'm not a professional installer when it comes to hiding wires and cables and all that crazy stuff, as you can see by my demonstrations. But I'll have somebody do all the better professional work in here and basically hide all those wires and cables and stuff so the kids don't get their hands on it whatsoever. Is there anything like me? They were going to jack it up. Yes, when I was going to jack things up. All right. Let's... uh. Let's bring up something really interesting, real quick. Let's see, when I still have to do my panel demonstration, which I haven't got a chance to do that yet either. <coughs> Let's bring up a gray colored screen. Someone actually suggested this in one of my videos, and it was actually one of the best suggestions ever. You say, well, why don't you pull up a gray screen, because I want to see how a gray screen reacts on your technology versus another gray screen. So our screen being black, how would it pull up a gray screen? And just to let you see, this is the color gray it's supposed to pull up. So that's what's interesting that a black screen is pulling up a better gray screen than a screen that's actually gray that should be pulling up a better gray screen than a black screen. Whew, that was a whole lot to say in one hit. Oh, I'm big. Oh, really quick. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot to do something here for you guys real quick. Let's see how my other screen is playing right. Got a little more sun coming in. 
You know, so these things are not designed to take on direct sunlight, but they can take a lot of punishment. And like I said, at 12 o'clock, this projector is supposed to be off because it's supposed to be um, charged. It's supposed to be, I run my projector all night. Try not to burn out the bulbs because those bulbs are 160 bucks to replace on those projectors. They're not cheap. Especially when you paid about 200 to 100 bucks for the projector. All right, and there we are with the contrast. Like I said, it's just what it is, what it is. sorts is a white screen ever going to have the ability to pick up any form of contrast whatsoever It'll make a difference if you have all you have the best contrast reading in the world you're just not going to be to pick it up I'm gonna go back to that right there look at that that's that's not an eye opener I don't know what isn't To take a picture of that, I really do. That'd make a nice picture for an advertisement right there. At 5200 lumens, like I said, a lot of churches because people have commercial properties. I have been to like storefronts and they have the projector set up. There's a great big, huge Epson 4K projector. Pretty sure it's probably like a fit, probably 5,000, 6,000 lumens. They don't have it up on a white screen. I look, oh, that looks really bad. It's going to go in and vandalize the screen, just take some of my paint, just go. Oh, oh, oh. That's what I feel like doing sometimes. When I went to Disney World, oh, you gotta be freaking kidding me. Literally, when I went to Disney World, we went into this exhibit, and it was kind of like a wraparound sorority exhibit, and they had all these different um, screens, white screens, with all these different animals, and they were displaying all the specifications about the animal and the habitats and all that. Well, apparently, they had these crazy projectors. Of course, you know, it's Disney, they gotta have insane projectors. And I told somebody to watch my back because I wanted to go over into the employees only section and just sneak down there and have a little peek at these projectors they had down there. And yeah, they had some quite some big boy projectors. These weren't like your everyday projectors. These were Ronco projectors. They were big projectors. Like if Optimus Prime were to give you the middle finger, because the projectors were freaking huge. And I'm thinking like they're hitting this with all this power. And they're thinking that th this, these screens are acceptable. Of course, everybody else there thought they were acceptable. To me, I thought it was trash. I couldn't deal with it. It's like, I just want to just take a little roller and just go, then like, look, look what you're missing. <laughs> Buddy of mine laughing, he said that. So really, so yeah, and then my, my, my ex goes, well, why don't you, uh, why don't you just give me a business card? I was like, no, nah, I'm on vacation. I didn't want to be bothered with it. I was on vacation. I didn't want to talk about work. Look at that up close. Look at the white. Look at the white letters. Look how they fade without the background. See how the white letters pop when it hits that black technology? Look at the scenery on the green and the blue in the window. It's like somebody took a magic brush and just painted in the screen. You ever watch Road Runner where he basically paints in a, a, a doorway and he, he goes right through it? And then Coyote goes and he smacks the wall and falls. It just it reminds me of that. And you can see I like this right here because it shows that the screen is able to pick up the greens and the sky blue. And you see the sky, the clouds are moving back and the background. You can see all that. You can see how the white letters lift up. Where in here they wash and they fade out. Well, people, I had a great time with you. I always have a great time with you all. Even those who don't like me, I love you all. I am going to uh, get ready for later on tonight. 
uh, or evening, more like evening hours, we'll get a chance to fire up that screen for the last time because I'm going to take it down tomorrow and um, we'll do uh, some other demonstrations uh, for today. Uh, if you're interested in screen paint, it is available on our website. We do have information below. If I did put it there, if I didn't, I'll put that information below. And also, going to put two links in there. One link will be for the um, the uh, demonstration done on the thousand projector. I did another demonstration with lights out only, and the other demonstration is a paint on demonstration. Me using this technology to paint random crazy stuff like the top of a table, which is right there. We paint the top of that table. Uh, plexiglass. Oh, you gotta see how my plexiglass screen came out, man. You gotta see this is beautiful. Hold on for a minute. I gotta show you this. <coughs> All right. So I'm gonna show you. This is. My plexiglass screen. See how slick and cool. Now, mind you, the back of the screen was used for something else. But next time, I'm going to use a much cleaner piece of uh, plexiglass. But this is an old piece of plexiglass, which gave me some ideas. Now, when I go to basically paint my screens. So, how this one was painted. Oh, if you want to see how that looks, real quick. It pops up on the black glass. Here we go. So, how this one was painted with that really cool shiny black glossy border it is really easy to do so all you got to do is get yourself a sheet of plexiglass and what you want to do is paint the back of it with any kind of paint you can make it blue green red orange silver it doesn't make a difference because whatever you paint it on it's going to show through on the opposite side so you paint it with whatever color you want from the back of it say if you want to do like a um uh kind of a platinum bronze that's a beautiful color right there no nice cherry Oh, no, a nice cherry bronze, okay? Do a nice cherry Metallica bronze on the back of it. Coat that, let that dry. And then what you want to do is, when you flip it over, the whole entire screen is going to have this cherry kind of bronze, so peek into the opposite side. So what you do is you take your frog tape, and you go around your corners, like so. And then you take our black technology, and you roll it right in. Let that dry. Peel it off. And now you got a screen with a nice kind of bronze border around it. Now... For those who are saying, well, a bronze border is not going to work well from basically trying to keep the image in, the screen is black. So what you do is you paint the screen a little bit larger than the actual side screen that you're going to put in because it already has its own border built in because the screen is black. There's no need for me to have a border around my screen because my screen's black. Those are borderless screens right there. I don't have to have a border there because the screen is black. Right, yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to do me another screen with a kind of a cherry bronze kind of design to the back. Oh, yeah, that'd be beautiful. Yeah, I'm going to make me an elegant screen. All right, with that being said, thank you all for your time. I have to go, and God bless.